If you're like me and pronouncing some players' names becomes a problem, this one will be a doozy. Let me help you out, man. I had to solicit some help. Aban Ukanda. Abanakanda. You're welcome. Here we go. What is going on? Cover one crew. Hope everybody is doing well. We got a good one today. We're talking scouting reports back in the lab. We're talking Israel, Abanakanda. And I finally got this man's name right. God, it's a tough one. He's an interesting prospect. And we got to continue down the path of scouting reports. I got many other players to talk about as we continue down this offseason. He is a very interesting product and a running back that a lot of people need to be aware of. And, and we'll get into all the pros, cons. Team he got drafted by, so let's hop in and waste no more time. Israel of Banakanda. For all of you that have followed my work throughout all my time doing this stuff, you understand scouting reports are extremely important because it not only breaks it down for your favorite team, but for your fantasy football team, which players could potentially pop off. And Israel Abanakanda is a good one. Let's start with that NFL draft. Round five, pick eight by the New York Jets. And the Jets are building, man. I, you know, you can't hate it. Even as a Bills fan, you can't hate what they're doing at the, as a team as a whole. Robert Salah has got this team moving in the right direction. That defense was a baller last year, and they're only going to improve this season. We're talking the offensive side. They got themselves Aaron Rodgers, and everybody in Hype Town right now in New York is definitely on the wagon. And there's lots of talent to, uh, you know, throw that ball around. But we're talking running backs, fifth round, eight pick overall for Israel. And, I mean, it's a good value pick for me. It seems to me like the Jets were hedging their bets big time in this situation simply because we don't know what is going to happen uh, with Brees Hall. Is he going to start the season on the pop? Is he going to take some time off the ACL injury? And that is the question mark. New York Jets have a decent depth room here in this running back room right now. Brees Hall, like I said, is the biggest question mark. When will he return? Will this be a prolonged recovery? We saw what happened with J.K. Dobbins. You know, Javante Williams is on the injury right now as well on the ACL so there's gonna be time potentially the first season as a running back does not go very favorably there could be setbacks as they start to play and you know put the pads on and take some hits so this is a big problem this does feel like hedge betting for an Israel Abanakanda coming to the New York Jets to help spell out the problem of having a similar skill set like I don't want to say Brees Hall, but maybe a Xavion Knight, okay? You need the bigger running back with wheels, and Abanakanda does this very well. You still got Michael Carter, but it's very much a, we understand. Michael Carter was the same situation back at North Carolina with Javante Williams. He was the spell back. He was a change of pace back. Michael Carter is not a three down back in this league, and his body just could not handle it. He took some injury as well. Xavion Knight, okay, he came out and he, he, he showed out. He played uh, decently well. He showed that he could take the first and second down touches. I think you can enter an Israel Abanakanda in this offense rather easily and, and you could do the change of pace with him and Michael Carter and he could definitely jump even a Xavion Knight. I do like the fact that they added Travis Dye. Dye is one of my guys as well. A couple videos down you will see rookie sleepers. I had good things to say about a Travis Dye as well. Happy he latched on to these New York Jets. But what do you say we talk about some measurables for Israel Abanakanda. He is 5'10", 216. He is only 20 years of age. Young buck, man. That's what you're looking for from your running backs. Not a whole lot of tread on these tires. Another big positive. 30 contests, 390 attempts, 2,177 yards, a nice 5.6 on the average, 28 rushing touchdowns. It's very positive. 38 receptions for 354 and three receiving touchdowns. While that's not, you know, necessarily the top skill of his game, he is a very talented running back. And I think this past season really did showcase what this man could do in the backfield, even without, say, someone like a Kenny Pickett. They leaned on Israel Abanakanda quite a bit at Pitt, and he uh, repaid them handsomely this past year. So let's discuss some pros for an Abanakanda. Like I said, he's got a stout frame, and he is very athletic. This is what you're looking for. Prototypical size and frame, you like to see. 5'10", 216 is almost at that prototypical stature, and you like it. But the best part about it, he's got that athletic ability 
for how stout his frame is. Very much put together up in lower body frame, and I love it absolutely 100%. Extreme acceleration, and the speed is very good. The accelerators are definitely on point. I don't know if I'm going to say it's the burst. I think it is straight up accelerator shot out of a cannon. Once he gets going, he is going, man. And the speed to me, we got a question mark, and I'm going to discuss that in the con. But the speed, the tape speed is very good. Tape speed does never lie, man. And he showed out this past year. Breakaway wheels, track speed, second gear, 110%. It's all on film. It's all on tape. And the New York Jets, if they uh, have to utilize a Banacanda in year one, he will repay them. There are some nuances in his game that he definitely has to round out. But he's got the speed ability and speed kills in the NFL. We all know this, man. One cut speed runner. I mean, again, he explodes through those holes. Once the hole is found, he is going to be gonzo if there is an open lane. He does have enough juice to make that happen. And I mean, I think that's the undersell that a lot of people did see in this draft class. Him drop into the fifth round was simply because of lack of, uh, you know, uh, top tape level of high end consistency. That's the problem that you didn't have. It was a limited tape on this man because of him being the, you know, this last year was the breakout season, but there is enough for me to gauge and be, you know, have the warm and fuzzies on this man. He runs with lighter feet as well. I'm going to jump to that as well, because when you're talking about bigger guys, stout frames, I was saying the same thing about a Ramondre Stevenson. People doubted me for it. I'm telling you, when you see a big man that runs with light feet, not those heavy feet clunkers that, you know, pull in the you know the pellets off the turf you never want to see that a banana definitely has those light feet you're looking for vision is average though and i'm gonna put it here as a pro i don't think it's a con i think that you know there is work that needs to be done when it comes to his vision but it is good enough where he will find the hole he was more comfortable when the hole was obviously bigger but he can find those holes he can get skinny in between the tackles and he's gonna definitely uh you know find ways to uh roam free in the open field i should say it that way off tackle runs are great i mean he finds those cutback lanes he's always aware of where to go and i think that's another big positive so even if the hole does close up he does have the ability to look and find another uh opening where he could gallop through and, and that's a very big positive for a young man who's only 20 years of age to at least understand Understand cutback lane awareness and he does this pretty well also jump cuts are present it's not great but they're present and he's got more than enough to do it he's gonna find it in the open field open field cut ability is definitely there he's sharp cuts are gonna make people miss and he does have that the jump cuts are there but the you know the one cut you know change direction inside outside definitely there and on point and that's and then the accelerators kick in and he's off to the races very very good in this department for an abana kanda he's got good force impact on initial impact so i i wouldn't necessarily call abana kanda a bulldozer but he definitely has enough force well he, he will make uh, people take notice smaller defensive backs small uh, you know lesser safeties he's gonna make them take notice maybe bigger linebackers will have their way with an abana kanda but he definitely has good force impact he does like to fall forward Forward. So that's a good part of his game as well. Like I said, man, the 2022 season was a beast of a season for him. 239 attempts, 1431 in yards, and 20 to 0 rushing touchdowns for Israel. Just an absolute machine this past year. And I am shocked that he actually fell in the fifth round. I think it was a big mistake. New York Jets fans, you got yourself a pretty good player here in the fifth round. High, high value. But like I said earlier in uh, running back videos for scouting reports, this class was extremely deep. So if you're talking fifth round for a Banacanda in this draft class, he's likely going in the third round to fourth round in the you know previous drafts that aren't so running back heavy that's kind of the difference I see in this man but he does got some cons that we got to discuss upright running style and and this is a uh, you know a similar skill or uh, a con set trait that it's just you're going to take too much punishment he doesn't protect his body well and and the punishment will eventually wear on his frame the tread on the tires does get you know torn off a little bit quicker than you got a guy who understands how to protect his body is it a grave concern? No, it's just a note to say that his upright, uh, upright running style could be an issue when it comes to, you know, longevity of his career. Limited to first and uh, second down, being that first and second down running back, it's very possible. And I don't foresee him being a heavy target in any passing game. And I'll jump down to that one. Not a natural hand catcher whatsoever. Can he improve? Absolutely. All players can definitely improve. But right now, as we see it, definitely not a big part of his game. Can he catch? Sure. Is he going to catch them all? Likely not. But 
But, I mean, is it clunkers for hands? Maybe, maybe not. I just didn't like his hands. It's not natural whatsoever. Very forced, and he almost looks like he feared to catch the ball at times. Not saying he is. I'm just saying that's what it appears to be on film. The 40 time is very interesting. And I think this was a big conundrum for a lot of scouts because at his pro day, there was clocks that were timed at 4-3-2 and 4-4-1. So when you're talking a guy who's 5'10", 216, running a 4-3-2, damn right you should get excited. And it's not necessarily a con here. I'm only putting it down here because I got nowhere else to put it. We got to discuss which 40 time are we going to see. And when you see the tape speed, you're leaning toward that 4-3-2 because he does have that damn explosive ability that you absolutely love and covet. If it is 4-4-1, you're not, you know, uh, hurting by any stretch because that speed is still very impressive for a running back who's 216. He will bounce a little bit too much and he does lack some patience. So you do understand both those kind of coincide together where, you know, the whole closes up a little bit he doesn't follow his blockers to a key, uh, to a t and then he's you know trying to bounce a little too much because he knows he's got the wheels to get to the outside fair enough and that can be coached out of somebody's game but right now you got to highlight that as a negative right now for a banacanda is it a great deal of a negative? No, and I, I do believe that coachable traits are definitely there and understanding how to you know, improve your patience with your vision, understand how to follow your lead blockers, understand where the gaps on the assignments are. You will get better in that respect. Not much shake or juke. It is more the one cut, the you know jump cuts, like I said, they're present. It's not great than an elusive like Shady McCoy. I always go back to my guy Shady, but he doesn't have much shake or juke. It is the plant step, one cut and go, and that's the kind of running back you're going to get out of him doesn't break necessarily a lot of tackles but he will fall forward and I mean it's tape review I don't care what the statistics say if you're gonna say that he's a big time break tackle guy great I don't care about it I'm looking at the tape uh, you know to round out everything I see in this and you don't really see him breaking him to the point that he's gonna gain a huge extra yards after contact but he does do it he falls forward enough it's not ideal in that respect neither is pass pro he's gonna have to work on his pass pro ability he's gonna need improvement challenge the blitzing linebackers challenge those blitzing defensive backs and I mean you gotta protect Aaron Rodgers that's key if he does this very well he will become a fan favorite for uh, Aaron Rodgers to be in that backfield where he can be explosive and protect him on the blind side smaller hands sixth percentile man eight and one quarter inches it's not good I mean it's smaller hands hence why we say can he fumble the ball a little bit more in the pros potentially is this going to be a problem potentially is it a you know 100% problem no because we've seen guys with smaller hands like can he pick it for example small hands pick it He's doing just fine in his rookie year, so it doesn't preclude him from, you know, moving forward. But ball control and ball security in the NFL is definitely something I'm going to watch because that could be a problem. These guys are grown-ass men, and they're going to try to go after that ball. But, I mean, he is a good one. But for grading purposes... I'm favorable on a Banacanda more than I thought I would be. Always go into these scouting reports unbiased. I give him 74.3%. Very good score for a guy who fell into the fifth round. I definitely thought he was going to be in the third round, uh, you know, maybe late third round, you know, early fourth round. Did not happen, but I think he's a very good talent. I think the Jets definitely hedge betted here, got themselves a reliable running back that has wheels for days and is going to be able to exploit that if somebody goes down, if Brees Hall does not come back, uh, you know, week one, it's still to be seen. He could start on the pup. He could be absolutely 100% healthy, and if Brees Hall is healthy, then a bad Canada is not never going to see the field outside of you know here and there but he is definitely a good running back to hedge your bets on for the New York Jets they're going to be very excited with this guy so there you have it. That is Israel Oban Ukanda. And I finally got his name right because I had to go to the book for dummies because sometimes it's very difficult for me to pronounce these names. I know you guys have a hard time with it too. Just stop right now. But nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments, give me your thoughts. Jets fans, what are you thinking of uh, your new running back, Israel Oban Ukanda? You like him? You don't like him? You think he's going to see the field? Going to be tough with a Brees Hall, no kidding. But he's got some skills and it's definitely warranted to have him on the bench in the waiting just in case something happens but we'll see you next time i am out